Hi guys, in this video we're going to review some basic simple linear regression concepts and apply them to this little example that I have here. So first off, as usual, let me describe the example that I'm working with so that we're acquainted a little bit with what our goal is here. So first off, these variables uh, are a little bit, I need a little explaining. So months specifically means the months since you've owned an mp3 player a particular mp3 player and number of songs is the number of songs you have on that mp3 player after the amount of time specified in the previous variable uh, has elapsed so for example this very first observation here we have a person with an mp3 player uh, owned it for 23 months, has 486 songs on it. If you let me just jump down here, I have a person here who has an MP3 player for one month and has only 35 songs on it. Okay, so what we're trying to do here, our goal is we want to be able to see if we can predict how many songs you have on your MP3 player if we're given the information of how many months you've owned that mp3 player okay so right off the bat if you've kind of been initiated a little bit to regression you'll know which is your dependent variable and which is your independent variable so clearly we're trying to predict the number of songs you have as I said a, a minute ago so that that becomes our dependent variable okay and we're gonna be using the amount of time that you've owned the mp3 player as the predictor so that becomes our independent variable and you probably already have been initiated to the convention that we use the variable y in all regression equations and formulas for the dependent variable and x for the dependent sorry independent variable Okay, since we only have one independent variable, this is called simple linear regression. If we had multiple independent variables, this would be called multiple regression. Okay, okay. So now let's let's do some very preliminary preliminary exploration. I'm going to com um, compute the correlation coefficient as well as uh, very quickly make a scatter plot to see if there's any interesting pattern um, between these two variables okay so I'm exploring the relationship between these two so to do this right we have two numerical variables clearly they're quantitative so I'd like to make a scatter plot it's the go-to plot for this type of situation so I'll go over pick the most basic type of scatter plot which is just scatter uh, you don't need to choose any of these okay if it uh, I would check that it's doing the right thing because um, Excel's going to and any other software is going to suggest some plot. So let me just go ahead to design, select data, and just remove and build it from scratch. So I'm going to add name I don't really worry about at this moment. X values, I'm very carefully picking my months. And for my Y values, I'm very carefully picking my number of songs. Okay. Now you can work on this plot a little bit more and make it a little bit more um, to your liking as far as looks. You could put a title if you like, but the point here is we got a nice picture of what's going on. And that is that uh, there's clearly a positive, right, linear relationship between these two. How am I seeing this? Well, I think we all can see that there is a pattern here that looks roughly like the trace that I'm doing here. It's not perfect, and in real life, you'll never see a perfect um, relationship. Um, so don't look for that. What you're looking for is the signal, the pattern being uh, clearly, in, the, in this case, in a positive linear trajectory. So a uh, simple linear regression seems like it's going to be an ideal tool here to make the predictions that we wanted to. Okay, but before we do that, let's also compute the correlation coefficient. So 
this is the Pearson's correlation coefficient symbol R. We'll let the spreadsheet, in this case Excel, do all the com computation using the formula coral. We'll highlight in any order the x values, then the y values, or you could have done the y and the x. It does not matter. You'll get the same exact correlation, which is a staggering positive 0.9859. That is screaming, strong, positive linear association between these two variables. So now between the plot and the Pearson's correlation coefficient, I am fairly confident that I am going to um, use a simple linear regression here and that the results are going to be um, good in the sense that predictions will probably be very reliable um, with this resulting uh, equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. There's a number of ways to do that. If you have the data analysis tool pack installed, go over to your data ribbon, click data analysis, scroll down to regression. We're going to go ahead and just, if there's anything here, just delete it, start from scratch. Okay, this is how it should look for you. For your y values, very carefully select your y your dependent variable, make sure you take the title, the label rather, but don't take multiple labels that will confuse Excel or any other um, spreadsheet software. Next, highlight the X values along with their label. Since we selected the labels, we must check labels. A lot of this other stuff at the moment is not necessary that's good for more in-depth analysis what I'm gonna go ahead and do and make sure is make sure that the output shows up on this same sheet so I'll just throw it perhaps here we might have to move the plot click OK and I'll get all the output that I require and it actually looks great right off the bat a little little bit of cleaning up to do <clears throat> Okay, let's get some of these columns adjusted. We're just going to focus on a few numbers here, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, oh, that, that warped our plot. We'll fix that. Okay, this the visual is also always great to have right next to these all these values. Okay, so a couple things, and let me go ahead and highlight these things. We see um, that the equation here, the coefficient, is given right in this section. So let me go ahead and uh, make uncollapse my ribbon and highlight some of the important points here. So I got R square, adjusted R square. I have multiple R, which in simple re linear regression case is just another word for the correlation coefficient. You'll see that these two numbers match, right? Okay. And uh, a lot of these others are um, results of hypothesis tests. For example, the overall F-test p-value, the individual t-test uh, p-values are here, <clears throat> especially the one for the slope is interesting. Okay, But let me focus first and foremost on the equation of our simple linear regression line. So our, or, uh, our least squares line, rather. Okay, let me, let me t write this out. So it's, remember, y hat equals b0 plus b1 times x, right? That's roughly how you should have learned it. Obviously, I'm not using the best symbols here. I'm going to replace these with the names of our variables. So number of songs, hat. The hat is really important because it reminds everyone, it's very clear, that this is a prediction and not the actual number of songs. Make that songs equals b0. Well, I have b0. That's the intercept. So minus 12.89, if you just let me round to 2 times, or plus rather, the uh, slope. That's 21.13 positive times the independent variable, which was months. And therein is our simple linear regression equation. This equation right here is an explicit representation of the pattern that we observed here in the scatter plot. Okay? How can we visualize this? Well, if you go over to the 
to the plot and go over to the plus sign, you'll see a trend line option. Click the arrow there and choose linear. You'll see the actual line. This line right here, which can be formatted to be solid or any color that you like, but we're not going to worry about that, is exactly this equation that we typed here and pulled out of the regression analysis results. Okay, so this equation came from this output, and that is visually this line right here. Okay, that is the best fit line. It captures the pattern that we uh, saw in the scatter plot, and this line now can be used to make predictions. For example, if I want to predict how many songs you have on your MP3 player, and you tell me that you've owned your MP3 player for uh, five months, I can plug in five into the equation here and just do some simple arithmetic and out will come the predicted number of songs. So I can predict how many songs you have. So let's just go ahead and do that just very quickly. Um, obviously I'm using the equation here uh, just by references instead of typing the numbers. So I predict that you have about 93 songs on your um, MP3 player. So uh, is that a good prediction? Is that a bad prediction? Well, one way to assess that, and that will take us to our final point, is uh, so with something called R square. So let me finish this video by giving you at least one assessment tool for a simple linear regression model. So basically, this is a way to say, hey, how did everything go? Are these, uh, is this equation that I got useful? Is it going to make good predictions? Well, there's got to be some metrics to, to judge that, to assess that. And one of those, among many, is this thing called R square, which is the coefficient of, mul of uh, determination. Coefficient of determination. The way you interpret this number uh, is to convert it to a proportion, or a per percentage rather, and, and, and it literally means this. Uh, so let me actually convert it and go ahead and give you the interpretation. In this case, you see this becomes about 97%, right? So 97% of the total variation in the number of songs on an MP3 player, okay, is... explained by the number of months that you've owned the mp3 player so one more time 97 percent of the total variation in the number of songs on an mp3 player is explained by the number of months you've owned the mp3 player that's a pretty high value for r square as you can guess, the highest it can be is 100%. The lowest it could be is 0%. If you had to choose, obviously, it's out of your hands because you can't um, change the data, but you'd like an R-square that's high, closer to 100% than to 0%. So in this case, this is a great indication that this model is doing a very good job at what it's trying to do, which is make predictions of the number of songs using the number of months owned. All right. Um, some of the other things that I highlighted here are a little bit beyond the scope of what I wanted to talk about, but I did mention that's the overall F-test p-value, and down here we have the individual t-test p-value. Those are also um, further assessment tools for judging your model. In this case, we have a very strong relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable and we saw it with the picture we confirmed it with r square and we also got to see the uh, actual equation that best fits that that um, pattern that we saw in the form of the simple linear regression model okay so i hope this was helpful uh, you also learned how to kind of implement this in uh, Excel, um, but it also can be done in uh, any spreadsheet software or more advanced uh, uh, math or uh, statistical software package like R. Okay, so till next time, make sure to check out my other videos on Jalayer Academy. Subscribe, like, and share, 
and have a great day.